Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to create a Docker Postgres container to host the Postgres database. So the first thing that you should always do when you don't know about something is that you need to go to Google and you need to find the documentation for it. So in this case, we're just going to type Docker Postgres and we're going to see if we can find something useful. So here you see that we have the Docker Postgres image in Docker Hub and it's the official Docker images for Postgres so it's super cool. Now we're just going to scroll down and we will take a look at the documentation on how to use this image and here you see that we need to run a container, assign a name and we need to provide an environment variable defining the password pretty similar to the MySQL process and then you can put it in the background and finally you just provide the image that you want to launch. But let's scroll down and take a look at the environment variables. You see that we have the Postgres password, the Postgres user, and the Postgres DB. So we're just going to create a container with these three environment variables and we will test them. So let's just try to do docker run dash d dash name Postgres and we want to create this environment variable with Postgres password and the password it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then we want to add another environment variable because we want to create a Postgres user. So we say Postgres user, it's going to be Docker user, it could be. And then we just want to create another environment variable defining the database. So we will use this one. And the database is going to be Docker DB. I don't know. And great. Now we just want to test that our service is working so we are going to expose the port for Postgres but if we don't know the port that this image exposes then we need to take a look at the documentation so let's try dash p to see if we can find something useful let's scroll down and see if we can find some port uh, no we couldn't find it so let's type like port and let's see if we can find something. No. So if you can't find the information that you are looking for, in this case we don't know in which port Postgres runs. So you have two options. The first option is to take a look at the Docker file of this image. So you can just click on any of these tags and this will redirect you to the Docker file of this specific tag and you can look for an argument or an instruction in the docker file which is expose. So let's see if we have any expose argument here and yes so we have this port in here. But probably you don't know what does expose mean in the docker file because we didn't talk about that. Well this is the moment and in a docker file you type the expose expression in order to inform the port in which your application is supposed to run. You can basically put anything in here because the expose instruction doesn't do really too much, but it's only for information purposes. By taking a look at this Docker file and by taking a look at this argument, I know that this container should run on this port and that really helps a lot. Or the second thing that you can do is that basically you can just create your container without defining any port and you can just provide the image in here like Postgres and well I don't have the image locally so Docker will download it but the thing is that once the container is created and you type Docker PS in the port sections you are going to see the port right here and you may be wondering okay but where this information is taken from and well the answer is this when you define the expose instruction in your docker file and you put the port here once you create the container without any port it will show up here as an available port for the container. I mean you can map this port to your host's port in order to expose the service as I told you. 
this is only for information purposes. So for instance, if you are creating an Apache image, then probably you want to put here port 80 to inform your users that your application should run on port 80. If you are creating, for example, a Tomcat image, then you should put expose here and you should put the port 8080 for your users to know that your image runs on port 8080. Or if you are creating a MySQL image, then in the expose instruction, you should put 3306, which is the default port where MySQL runs. So now that we know this, we can just go ahead and remove the container that we just created. So let's just go ahead and remove this container and let's create a new one. But now we're going to expose the port. So you say port, let's copy this port and paste it. And we're going to expose exactly the same port in our host. And we're going to map it to the same port in the container. Enter and you take a look at your running containers. Then you see that your database container is up and running. So if you go inside of your container and you try to log in, then let's try PSQL and I think that you can use dash D to define the database. But remember that the database is Docker DB and we defined it using environment variables. And here, if we pass dash capital U, we can provide the user. And in this case, we want to provide the Docker user, which was created by using environment variables. And if you hit enter, then it's super cool. You see that you are inside of your Docker container here. And then you see that you are connected to the Postgres console using the database that you just created and the user that you created once you launched the Docker container. So this is it for this video. I'll see you in the next lesson.